I know a lot of people are nervous about having a colonoscopy, so let's take the mystery out of it. This is our endoscopy area. We always make sure that the uh, gowns and drapes are only revealing what we absolutely need to reveal. So you can be reassured, uh, I am in the room at all times. We have a nurse and we have a technician. The uh, equipment is set up to monitor your blood pressure, heart rate. We have two monitors to look at the actual uh, procedure. So the nurse can look at the procedure, I can look at the procedure, and we can communicate together. The equipment is right here. It's all compact, it's high definition, and it actually is quite remarkable that there's a camera on the end of this that can see as clearly as my fingerprint and needless to say can see extremely small polyps. It's through this instrument that we can put air in, we can suction, and we can irrigate. On the day of your procedure, uh, you would have prepared at home to make sure your bowels are uh, as clear as possible. The better you do, uh, the more we can see, the more we can see, the more we can help you. Uh, most people have uh, medicines given, so they're put into a sleepy state where they can still converse, uh, but many times don't have any memory of the conversation. Uh, if there are special circumstances where you need to have a deeper anesthesia, that's arranged on a regular basis. And we use our fine staff of anesthesiologists to give you care, and they will be monitoring not only your sedation, but your breathing. This is the instrument we use to examine the colon. It's called a colonoscope. It looks very intimidating. Look how long it is. In fact, we rarely use more than about half of it to examine most people's colons. Women's colons, they're about a foot longer than men's colons. So even though they may be a little more challenging, we usually only spend about a half an hour, sometimes a little longer, in doing the examination. Of course, if we find things that we have to remove, then it may take a little longer. This instrument can see phenomenal detail. It's high definition. Here's two objects that you are familiar with. Here's a penny and a quarter. In the vast majority of cases, we're able to remove any abnormal tissue that we identify. Polyps, which can develop into cancer, are easily removable if they are a certain size. It's actually what we want to find in the colon because this is the real prevention that we can do with colonoscopic examination. We can remove these, prevent them from ever growing to a cancer, and then we can, on a regular basis, re-examine your colon because you're now at risk for colon cancer. What we don't want to do is wait so that when we do examine your colon, we actually find this, which is something that has grown too long and has now gone through the wall of the colon. If we're not sure whether a polyp has spread through the wall of colon, a special technique called endoscopic ultrasound can be done, which can see through the wall of the polyp and the wall of the colon. If it is spread through the wall of the colon, it no longer can be taken out endoscopically, it would need to be removed surgically. Fortunately, the medicines we use also gives you something that most people enjoy, which is amnesia. In other words, you're not going to remember a lot of the examination. Many people are quite surprised when the examination is over that we've even done the exam. For the rest of the day, you can't drive a car, you can't be responsible for childcare, and a number of other restrictions so that your best safety is maintained. The next day, you should be able to resume your routine activities. Typically, uh, if a polyp is found, it's usually small and few in number, and the next interval examination typically is five years. If you're at increased risk, because of a family history or other diseases, then you may have a shorter interval recommended. 